Welcome to the fourth part of setting up my network with me, where we are now starting to look at Unified Protect. So if you missed the first three parts, we did an unboxing. We've got it all configured. We set up Unify Network. There's a playlist down below if you want to go back and check those out. And now we're on to Unified Protect. So what do we need to set up within here? Now, there's a couple of decisions we need to make. Some may be right, some may be wrong, but you need to do what works for you in your specific scenario. So the first thing we want to think about is your CCTV network. Now, do you want to segregate your network? So if I go down to here, in a previous video, you will see I made the CCTV network separate. And you can go ahead and you can see I've got some devices on there already. They are my ONVIF cameras. So we're going to be configuring some of those. And you can see I've got, not quite sure why that one's coming up as a router, but we have a bunch of Hikvision cameras. Again, they're not that model. So I'm not sure again why it's coming up as those, but nor here nor there. As long as it connects and does what I need it to do, that's all that matters. So we have the network set up within here. We have some Unify Protect cameras, so I'm actually going to create a Wi-Fi network for this to sit on, and I'm going to call it No Internet Access. So you want to give it something inconspicuous. A lot of people might come for me in the comments in this saying you shouldn't set up a Wi-Fi for your CCTV, but I want everything on that specific network, and I don't want it talking to anything else on my network. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a password, and then we're going to choose our CCTV VLAN. Now we'll go to Manual. We'll set some of these up. I only have a single AP at the moment. Again, if there's multiple APs, you can choose different groups. And then we're going to go ahead and untick the 6 gigahertz. Says I don't think any of the cameras are going to be using 6 gigahertz at this point. And if you want, you can hide the Wi-Fi name. Now, keep in mind that this doesn't stop people from finding it. There are some Wi-Fi sniffers out there that will find your hidden Wi-Fi's. But it makes it a little bit less easier for the common user to know that there's another Wi-Fi network there. You can do device isolation, which I don't want to do at this point. And if there's anything else that you want on here, you can go ahead and do that. So we can go ahead and add that network. We now have this additional SSID that we can use. Next would be in terms of security. And we've already set up some rules in here where we've stopped all the traffic between the networks talking to each other. So anything from the CCTV network won't be able to talk to any other network which is fine for what we want to do. If you want to lock this down a little bit more in terms of what the CCTV camera can talk out to the internet, so you don't necessarily want it to connect to everything, we can go ahead and Google some ports. So there'll be some update ports that are required for the Unify Protect cameras and possibly the NTP time server as well, which will need to go out for my other cameras that I know of. So that would probably be the only sort of CCTV port that would be required. And you can stop anything coming in and out from those ports as well. But we're not going to do that in this video. We're going to keep it quite simple and straightforward. We don't need, we've blocked everything between the networks and that is all we need for now. So Unify Protect setup. It's relatively straightforward. Again, there's there's not a lot in here that we will need to do, but let's quickly go through some of the settings. So the recording and storage manager will come and have a look at shortly once we've got some cameras adopted, but let's look at the system settings. So we have time format and we have the temperature, whether you want Fahrenheit or Celsius. We have a migration file. So if you're moving Unify Protect system, you can go ahead and download the file and import it to your new setup. We have a recovery code. So if you want to adopt this camera to another console, you haven't forgot it or you're not able to reset it, you can use this recovery code right here. And I'm not going to reveal that in this video for obvious reasons. If you want your devices updated, we can go ahead and do this at three, whatever time you want. I would suggest you do this manually, but it depends on how hands off you want to be on your network. You don't want your cameras updating at 3 a.m. and they don't come back for some reason, whatever the case. Archiving your footage that's on your network. Heat map geofencing we can do geofencing you can set the location of your unify console and when you move away from that location it can do various different things then we have low latency video timeline scrubbing enhancement which we want for this sort of setup and then we want to be able to discover third-party cameras likelihood is this option is probably unticked so if you do want to adopt it make sure you get that ticked and then we can go ahead and continue with this so let's go to the devices and you can see the wi-fi cameras are already here and you're probably wondering at this point, well, where are all the Hikvision cameras? Now, from what I've seen so far within the Unify Protect version, you're not able to adopt cross VLAN. It doesn't find the devices. That could be because some ports are blocked or whatever it might be, but that's not currently there. So jumping into the devices, we have all these listed along here. These are all the Wi-Fi cameras that have been picked up. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and adopt all of these one by one. And you're probably wondering why the Hikvision cameras aren't there at this point. Well, at this moment in time, we are not able to adopt them across a VLAN. Hopefully that will be coming soon. But once it's back, then I'll be sure to do another update on this. 
So let's start by adopting our first one. So what we need to do is go back to Unify Protect and find what all the IP addresses are. And if I show you that just here, you'll see the 10.10.30 range. So let's start with the top one. Let's go with, so we click the question mark at the top here and try advanced adoption. So we go 10.10.30.219. Type in the ONVIF username and password. Now this is different compared to other ones. So do keep this one in mind. This isn't your general login to your camera, so it might be slightly different. Click confirm. And there you go. There's the third party camera added. And then we just got to give this a quick refresh and it will appear. So you can see that camera is just added. And just like any other unified protect camera, you have all the different options within. So let's start with the G3 instant that we have right here. So I have that just here. And um, we can see what it's connected to the network and the signal strength. And then we can take a look at the recording options. So we have always, custom, never, continuous or events only, and then the seconds before and after. So I generally leave these as standard, unless you have a specific use case to change it to record 15 seconds or 20 seconds before an event, you can do that. Frames per second, I leave as auto and the video compression as well. And then what you want to add on there. So I wanna leave all of this off so we can just leave it as it is. I wanna take off the logo so we can untick it and then click apply. Recording retention is auto, but if you want to customize this, so delete recordings after X number of days, you can do. Otherwise, it will just use the default. And then right here is where we configure and edit motion zones and privacy zones. So if we go within here, I was about to say, I'm not quite sure what the color is there, but you can, it's actually the highlight. So you can go ahead and select what you need. So let's say we just want motions in this zone here. And you can also add multiple zones as well. So you can add a second zone. For example, if you just needed something here, you can go ahead and add that. So that's how you add the sensitivity zones. Then the privacy zones, if you want to block something out, say for example, a neighbor's garden or whatever it might be, you don't want to, you're not supposed to be overlooking. We can just go ahead and block all of this and click save. And there you go, that's now blocked. So if we look at the camera itself, you can see that's now blocked off. It's privacy on the back of it. So it is a little bit behind me, but you can see the camera. You can see my hand just here waving across it and we have the privacy zone set up there too. Then on the final page of the settings, we can go ahead and give the camera a name. We can tune the image slightly. We can change the microphone sensitivity and we have some night vision customization within here. We can choose whether to have the status light on and off. So it's quite an annoying blue light at night. So I tend to turn it off. And then we'll come back to tags in just a few moments. If you want to share the live stream link, you can go ahead and click this, share this link, and people will be able to view that stream. It is one camera per stream. So you can't share multiple cameras with one link. We have notification settings, which we'll cover in a few moments as well. Now, this is where you might want to change the Wi-Fi settings. So we can go into here. We can go and choose the Wi-Fi that we want to connect to. And then we can move this across to the CCTV network as well, along with everything else. So you don't have to keep it within there. Uh, I am just looking down this list. I can't see the Wi-Fi SSID, so we might need to just unhide it for this point so it can find it and then it will go ahead and connect to that network. We then have a real-time streaming protocol. So if you want to stream this to another device, you can do. And then we have the manager of restart and remove. So going back to the tags, you can go ahead and create tag. We can call this Wi-Fi cameras, for example, and we can go ahead and tag all the Wi-Fi cameras. Um, we can create a new tag, for example, and say outdoor. And um, then we know the doorbell and the Hikvision camera is outside. So you can quite easily flick between. So where's the Wi-Fi cameras? Where's the outdoor cameras? It just makes life a little bit easier when you're trying to organize a big list of cameras to scroll through. Then we can look at the playback. And down here is where we'll have a look at archiving. So I can go ahead and choose to video archive. And I want to take the last, uh, let's say the last 10 to 15 minutes that I want to archive. And then we have a couple of options. So you can download the file to this device. You can go ahead and also send it to a NAS. You can send it to Dropbox or you can send it to OneDrive. So if you want to send it to a NAS, you can click next type in the NAS name, the port, the IP address. Just be sure, again, there's communication between the two. So I know for me, between the two networks, there's no connectivity at the moment. So I would need to punch a hole through the firewall to allow me to connect my CCTV cameras to my NAS. And it really is as simple as that. And then you go ahead and download it to the NAS. 
Next, we can take a look at the smart detections. Now, again, you can filter this via tags that you've created or a specific camera, and then you've got all events, persons, and vehicle. Now, this is the smart detections only, but if you wanna see all detections, you can see that all along here and what's in there. If you want a bit more of a cleaner look, you can choose just the smart detections. One thing I will note is that ONVIF cameras, which I'm sure you're already aware of, do not have any motion settings or notification settings at this point. So hopefully that is coming on a later release. Going back to the storage settings now, so we can go in here and do enhance retention. So we can retain high quality recordings for X number of days. So we can go, I wanna keep the high quality recordings for 120 days. Then anything after 120 days will be a lower quality of recording. And then finally, just to conclude this setup, we'll go ahead and talk about the notification settings. So these are alarms that you can create. There are some standard ones that are already in there, but for example, I can go ahead and create a new alarm. Now there's a number of settings in here already that do notifications for you. So do check them before you start playing around with them. So for example, we have an animal detection, which will be across all devices and it will send it to all admins. Motion detection, we have that for all devices, which can be triggered and you can add an action based off these if you want, which is a webhook. And then within the webhook, you can do a Slack post or a custom webhook. Or if you wanted to create a manual alarm, what you can do is go in here, test alarm one. We can go ahead and choose the trigger. So there's a whole bunch of triggers in here that we can choose from. Um, if you've got the doorbells, faces, unknown faces, person of interest, license plates. So these are with the AI cameras. You can go ahead and recognize faces and license plates. With detections, we have all of these along here, glass breakage, sirens, burglars, however that looks like. Choose whatever you want, and then we can go ahead and press save. And then we can do custom or always. We wanna send a notification for that. And then we can go ahead and choose another action. So a webhook, custom webhook, type in the URL, and away you go. There you go, you can see all the cameras that I have have been added, and it's really that easy and simple to set up Unified Protect. So if there's anything I missed or something else that you wanna see, let me know down in the comments below and maybe I can put something together in a future video. Also, I was thinking of adding an additional part where we do some performance testing on the network to see how well it actually works. But if you wanna see that again, let me know down in the comments below. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.